Miami Heat at 10, the Toronto Raptors at 11, the Brooklyn Nets at 12, the Utah Jazz at 13, the Oklahoma City Thunder at 14, the Detroit Pistons at 15, the Orlando Magic at 16, the Sacramento Kings at 17, the Portland Trailblazers at 18, the Charlotte Hornets at 19, the Phoenix Suns at 20, the San Antonio Spurs at 21, the Memphis Grizzlies at 22, the Minnesota Timberwolves at 23, the Chicago Bulls at 24, the Washington Wizards at 25, the New York Knicks at 26, the Atlanta Hawks at 27, the Cleveland Cavaliers at 28, the Golden State Warriors at 29, and last was the first pick overall in the draft. That would be the New Orleans Pelicans at number 30. And here are some, uh, this is by Ben Rohrbrock of Yahoo Sports. Uh, he writes about who were the top NBA trade, big hunt trades this year going on. Um, the NBA trade season opened on Sunday. So there's people that have already joined the list. Uh, here are the players that he lists down as uh, the Bragadin shifters. He's got Bogadin Bodanovich of the Sacramento Kings. DeMar Rosen of the San Antonio Spurs, Spencer DeWindy of the Brooklyn Nets, Aaron Gordon of the Orlando Magic, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Chris Paul of the Oklahoma City Thunder, D'Angelo Russell of the Golden State Warriors, and Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. Here are his series swingers. He has Aaron Baines of the Phoenix Suns, Davis Betrons of the Washington Wizards, Robert Covington is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Derek Favors of the New Orleans Pelicans. Danilo Gallinardi, Oklahoma City Thunder. Andre Iguodala of the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, Marcus Morris of the New York Knicks. And Tristan, Tom Tristan Thompson, excuse me, of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then these are the fringe contenders. You have DJ, uh, excuse me, DJ Augustin of the Magic. Malik Beasley of the Nuggets, Jay Crowder of the Grizzlies, Ichwan Moore of the Pelicans, J.J. Redick for the Pelicans, Terrence Ross of the Magic, Dennis Schroeder of the Thunder, and Jeff Teague of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And also some um, not-so-good news as far as the NBA is concerned. Former uh, NBA Commissioner David Stern is in serious condition after suffering a brain hemorrhage. Um, he's in, after suffering a brain hemorrhage, Stern 77 was hospitalized. Underwent surgery Thursday. He was transported from New York City restaurant following a 911 call from cardiac arrest. The NBA released this statement. Uh, David Stern remains in serious condition following emergency surgery to address his sudden brain hemorrhage on Thursday. He's receiving great care, surrounded by his loved ones, the Stern family, and everyone at the NBA appreciates his incredible outpouring of support. Our thoughts and prayers remain with David and his family. Uh, of course, he was the uh, NBA. Um, Commissioner from 84 to 2014, he ended the job again to current NBA Commissioner Adam Silver on February 1st of 2014. Um, Stern was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame um, later, uh, later that year in 2014. So our thoughts and prayers go out to David Stern and his family. Um, I do have some kind of I what I call my uh, I would call it uh, miscellaneous news at the end of my show. And I got some sad news on both of those accounts. Excuse me, guys, at the end of my show. So I'll get into get into that um, at the end of my show. But, uh, you know, as always, guys, you know, thank you for coming on here and listening to me on Thursday night. And, you know, I was given this, this um, juncture back a while back and uh kevin dix is the guy that i was on his show and take listen guys to him and dana uh the barbershop is awesome on monday nights uh from seven to nine listen to them man it's a great show uh that's where i started um and then they let me kind of run with my own show and i've been doing that ever since and uh it's been great and i would not be here without them and of course ralph garcia as well uh, I would not be here without any of those guys. So, you know, as this being my last show, I'm going to go ahead and, or last show of, of the 2019 year. Let me just say not my last show, but the 
2019 year, I want to get, you know, thankful because I will not be on before January 1st. So at the end of my show, I'm going to go tell you what I've been thankful for this year as far as podcasting and writing goes. So let me guys go get into some boxing and UFC news. Uh, this is um, an article by Kevin Iwell of Yahoo Sports. Um, Tyson Fury has a fight coming up, as it was announced to me um, the other day by my man Adam. He'll be fighting James Wilder on February 22nd in Las Vegas. But recently, Tyson Fury um, split with his trainer, Ben Davidson, um, which is kind of interesting. Um uh, it says there would be no lucrative rematch for the WBC champion DeAndre Wilder for Tyson Fury were it not for Ben Davidson. There have not been an initial bout between the two giants with claims to the heavyweight throne were it not for Davidson. Davidson re, uh, revealed on social media Sunday that he is split from Fury and would no longer train the lineal heavyweight champion who fights Wilder in a rematch of their memorable 2018 bout on February 22nd in Las Vegas. On Monday, Fury announced that Sugar Hill Stewart, the nephew of the late Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart, would be in the corner for Wilder. Um, Fury uh, was more than 400 pounds and not far away from a suicide attempt when he hooked up with Davidson. With Davidson's uh, guidance, he dropped 140 pounds, fought Wilder to a controversial draw, and signed a big dollar cold promotional agreement with top rank to fight in the United States. Uh, Davidson was far. Uh, far more than a trainer, and actually working on strategy and teaching Fury's technique, or at least for his contributions. Um, he is the guy who quite literally brought Fury back to life. Um, he was there as much way he could help Fury with his mental health problems, and as far as boxing knowledge, Davidson is 27 and doesn't have the years of experience uh, that someone like Freddie Roach brings to a corner. He's perfectly content trainer, but there are hundreds, if not thousands, of perfectly competent trainers. Davidson was uh, Fury's whisperer, a guy who was there for Fury during the many rough patches of his life. Fury has been public with his mental health demons, and Davidson is one of the key figures who helped him through that. It's going to be something Fury has to fight all his life, but is a far better place now than he is in his dark days after uh he beat Vladimir Klitschko in 2015 to become the unified champion and begin to uh, think of taking his own life. Um, he speaks publicly about his issues in a bid to help others face their problems. People are often reluctant to admit that they have problems and need help, and Fury has tried to remove that stigma that surrounds them. One isn't nuts simply because he or she suffers from depression or some other form of mental illness. So, guys, he has split with Ben Davidson. Um, so that is interesting. Um, again, there the Fury Wilder fight took place last year on December 1st of 2018. So a year ago and 18 days um, in Los Angeles. Um, so it was uh, fought to a draw. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Tyson Fury moves forward now uh, without Ben Davidson because it sounds like to me that Davidson was kind of like, um, the guy that uh, Fury turned to in the rough times. So it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, how he is um, remo uh, moving forward, how he will be. Um, the other one, guys, um, is Canelo Alvarez gives up the WBO light heavyweight title just six weeks after winning it. Uh, Alvarez knocked out. Sergey Kovalev six weeks ago to win the WBO light heavyweight belt. Now he's vacating the title. Uh, this is by Liz Rocher of Yahoo Sports. There are no shady dwellings or wrongdoing. Alvarez is voluntarily relinquishing the title to comply with the World Boxing Organization rules, which prohibits champions like Alvarez from holding titles in multiple weight classes from other boxing organizations. Since Alvarez currently holds the middleweight and secondary super middleweight titles with the World Boxing Association, he had to give up his light heavyweight belt with the WBO. Alvarez is getting something in return, though. According to ESPN, the WBO agreed to allow Alvarez to be designated mandatory challenger to any WBO title holder in any division he wants to fight in. So Alvarez doesn't have any hard feelings about giving up the belt. In fact, he's looking 
as, a, as an opportunity. Quote, I know that my accomplishments in the ring have brought pride to my fans in my country. Alvarez said in a statement via ESPN. I have long enjoyed my relationship with the WBO and appreciate all they do to preserve and enhance the sport of boxing. Um, sorry, guys. Let me get that. There we go. Uh, this agreement allows WBO to have a light heavyweight title uh, contested regularly and allows me to pursue bouts against the best opponents, regardless of weight class. Oscar De La Hoya, Alvarez's promoter and CEO of Golden Boy Promotions, was similarly positive about Alvarez's future. And, quote, we completely support the decision made by Canelo and the WBO, De La Hoya told ESPN. Canelo made history by stopping Kovalev in an impressive fashion to become a fourth division world champion. Not only did he show that he is a real threat at 175 pounds, but he also demonstrated that he's fully capable of moving across several divisions to look for the most exciting fights for fans. Alvarez, who is 29 years old and is 53, one and two with 36 KOs, has worn belts in four divisions overall and in three different divisions over the past 12 months. In December 2018, he knocked out Rocky Cooling to claim the super middleweight title while also being the reigning middleweight world champion. He went back to middleweight in May and defeated Daniel Jacobs to unify the belts, though one was stripped from him just uh, last month when he jumped two divisions at 15 pounds um, to the light heavyweight and knocked out Kovalev to capture the WBO belt. Alvarez is set to fight again in May of 2020, but has yet to decide between middleweight or super middleweight. Uh, so we'll have to wait, guys, to see which one he decides. And here are the winners and losers from USC 245, which happened just this past weekend. This article is by Kelsey um, McCarson. And these are the matches that she says um, here. The stacked UFC 245 pay-per-view event on Saturday night at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, featuring three UFC title fights, certainly didn't disappoint. USC welterweight champion Toronto Usman Outsla, gritty background Kobe Cullington to stop the challenger with just a little less than one minute left in the final round. Alexander Volnikovsky ended Max Holloway's featherweight title reign via unanimous decision. And Amanda Nunez defeated her bantamweight belt against Jermaine de Ramon in a rematch that went the full 25 minutes. Uh, beyond those world championship fights, other important matches on the main card, there were plenty of prelim fights worth keeping an eye on. Rising middleweight uh, Funamo Serrano made the most of his UFC debut by scoring a thunderous knockout over Oscar Piocori. And I apologize, guys, if I'm botching these last names. Brandon Monroe and Curia Car France reminded USC fight fans just how much fun this trawweight division can be uh, with two fighters go for broke. Phantom weight Irene Alana stopped previously undefeated top contender Ketson Vakari with a perfect, picture perfect left hook in the first round to make her first case to be the next crack at Nunez. Oh, what a violent night in Las Vegas. But now with all the action is over, there's only one thing left to do. It's time now to put our USC matchmaker hats, decide the next steps for the winners and losers from the last USC pay-per-view of the decade. Okay, the first one, guys, was Soriano defeated Pacquiao by KO uh, 317 of round one. And then going through the matches here. Um, so they have Pacquiao versus Philip Rowe, Soriano versus uh, Ian Hinch, Jessica I defeated Va, uh, sorry, Vivian Aravia in you know, a decision. Uh, I versus Joanne Calderwood and Aroya versus Jennifer Mala. Again, guys, if I'm botching these last things, I apologize. Brandon uh, Murnau versus France. France versus the winner of the Tim Elliott Oscar Oscar Vava fight. Murano versus Diviana Fogarito. Again, if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I do apologize. Chase Hooper defeated Daniel Tilmar. Tilmar versus Eric Wisely and Hooper versus Julio Arc. Matt Brown defeated Ben Saunders. Saunders versus Dusko Chudervac. Brown versus Carlos Condit. And Omari uh, Akadev defeated Ian Hinch. Hinch versus Serrano. And Octomod versus Bronson. Irene uh, Ottawa. Vera, Vera uh, versus Aspen Ladd, 
Ariana versus Jermaine Dealer on me. Uh, Jeff Neal defeated Mike 